thank you, Harold, and thank you for the introduction and for having me today in uh, uh, your Unity Vienna uh, meetup. So, as mentioned, my name is uh, Jérôme Boré Delaunay. I'm a senior technical specialist here at Unity, uh, focusing on the uh, industrial side, uh, actually on automotive transport and manufacturing. And uh, I've been using Unity since 2009 and joined Unity in 2018, right? So I've been there uh, here about three years now. Actually, it was three years anniversary on uh, Friday. So as a technical specialist, I'm an ambassador for uh, Unity's growth inside the new industries, right? And specifically uh, an interface with the community of creators inside our industrial customers. So usually outside of games, uh, although some of the experience, uh, as you can see, even in uh, XR training or AR are actually heavily gamified. but uh, my background with Unity is actually around um, uh, XR installations, right? so kiosks, for example, or trade show installations, mobile application, embedded applications for, uh, for example, onboard uh, entertainment systems on aircrafts, and also uh, architectural visualization, uh, including, for example, a collaboration with uh, Herzog de Meuron for the um, Hamburg um, Philharmonic. Uh, Theater. So this talk is called The Real-Time Revolution. It's actually uh, focused on uh, a few uh, items. First of all, we're going to go through some uh, use cases of Unity inside innovative companies uh, that are leveraging our technology, our platform to uh, transform the way they create, uh, de or design, create, manufacture, maintain, and obviously uh, sell and market their products. Uh, we, we look at the ecosystem as a whole because Unity is not only the Unity editor, there's a lot of added uh, components that we either resell or we partner with in order to uh, promote that are uh, specific to industry and are there to help uh, our creators basically getting started faster or uh, overcome uh, difficulties or, or uh, limitations of the Unity platform that's you know heavily um, uh, focused on gaming, right? One of the first uh, use cases. Sorry, everything all right? Okay, one of the uh, I had a, a little uh, feedback. Recording in progress, so we should be good now. One of the first companies I like to mention is Volvo, who's improving collaboration between design, design and engineering, um, and also saving money by reducing their reliance on physical mockups. So rather than uh, a lengthy talk, I'm going to have I'm going to play a, a video. Let me make sure that the sharing uh, sound and optimized for video is on, and let's go. I love video games. I learned how to program a game by myself because that was my dream job. And I was using Unity as my game engine. When I realized that I can use this technology to work in one of the most rigid and traditional industries. Right, and now we are changing automotive industry. I heard of Unity real-time tools. When was the first time? Video games. It was amazing, like, that's super powerful. Now we're pushing different industries in the non-gaming sector. The automotive industry is quite advanced in using real-time 3D. Now we can use a game engine to put the whole car together and being able to collaborate together. At Volvo Cars, we're challenging the current processes and pushing the boundaries together for the future. Yeah. I'm Timmy Guro, and I'm leading virtual experiences at Volvo Cars in Gothenburg, Sweden. The guiding principle at Volvo from the start was safety because cars are driven by people. In 1959, Volvo invented the three-point seatbelt. Volvo decided to give the patent away because they thought its safety should be available for everyone. That's part of the Volvo car's value. We care about the society. My name is Anna Hellmark, and I'm responsible for the human-centric lab at Volvo Cars in Gothenburg, in Sweden. I have worked in the automotive industry for 19 years. It used to be a lot of 
test cars, lights, opening and closing doors, safety, sustainability, design, noise and vibration, steering and ergonomics. A lot, a lot of test cars, a lot of space and a lot of money. But it has been like that in the car industry for a long time. We should be able to do this in a better way. Volvo is the most ambitious car company that is using Unity as a glue to cover the whole life cycle of production processes from early design till the consumer applications. In the design department, you start from a sketch, then you go into the clay models and you test different colors and the personality of the car. And in the same time, engineering starts to work on various parts. It's hard to communicate between engineering and design, where design wants to do some part in a way by engineering saying that that will affect aerodynamics. But with Unity, it's like a movie, and a movie is fun to watch. By using the same tool, we are able to speak the same language. So you can experiment with the complete virtual vehicle and make changes before we go into prototyping and production phase. Volvo's vision is that by 2020, nobody will die in a new Volvo car. By using real-time technology, we can expose our engineers that work with safety to different scenarios. We also use Unity for machine learning training for self-driving cars. We train the models to recognize different objects because we don't want to gamble with real people's lives when we are testing those scenarios. Unity, it's the bridge over the pain points. That's how I see it to make life easier. Okay, we love our technology, but can we drive with it? We needed to simulate different scenarios to test them internally with the real car on the road. I was the first one and I was pushing its limits. I was driving a real model and I could switch between virtual models overlaid perfectly. Hey, can we actually test how rain will look and the wipers performance? It's like, oh yeah, I have some rain. I could add the moose in front of the car and see how it would react to those changes. And everything was super fast because we were running Unity from the back seats. I'm really looking forward to see how those tools are gonna develop in the future. For the past hundreds of years, it was all about people commuting between A and B and we still want to keep the human in the loop so they can enjoy the ride. The future looks bright. Unity is drastically changing the automotive industry and changing the way we work. Which is a big deal. I love this case study because the uh, it's really the epitome of why uh, people are, are creators are using Unity. It's to um, create this bridge between various disciplines, various uh, lives, uh, uh, time within the life cycle of a product, and really accelerate the way uh, you can drive innovation within an organization. Another example um, is Lockheed Martin with their ChillNet uh unity application for uh, remote collaboration or remote immersive collaboration that allow them to reduce uh, in 2019 their uh, reliance on travel in order to uh, actually uh, look at physical models uh, but also 
reduce the cost, right? That it um, using VR assisted validation, right? Including much early on in the design process where they didn't have to have a physical uh, model and uh, reduce travel costs by half a million dollars. And uh, they estimated that uh, they avoided about $10 million in uh, costs by leveraging this type of technology. And obviously this is also um, at a time of restricted travel and social distancing, having this distributed infrastructure to uh, review collaboratively designs, uh, minimize disruption to the uh, design and engineering process. Right? This is also highlighted by Toyota that uses Unity, the HoloLens, but also machine learning to reduce human error right, during uh, inspection using machine learning and uh, help their uh, technician and engineers right, uh, being guided and avoid uh, costly um, mistakes or uh, overlooking an issue or missing a step in a um, uh, maintenance process. Right? Scanska is also uh, leveraging Unity specifically for uh, increasing uh, worker awareness of job hazards, right? And, increase, and inc having fewer accidents and boost worker productivity using immersive uh, training modules, but also for the visualization where they can uh, view in 3D uh, the stages of a, a, a building and also the fourth dimension being time over time, see uh, what are the phases and what are the implications when it comes to a worksite management uh, and uh, also reduce reliance on uh, paper uh, to, to manage their documentation. They can have tens of thousands of uh, sheets of paper in order to, um, you know, deliver blueprints or uh, um, bill of materials, et cetera, and they can do that digitally uh, in a centralized way. As I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, um, the Unity editor is just one component of this ecosystem, right? We have a robust uh, set of solutions, uh, core platforms, which is a Unity industrial uh, collection. We have purpose-built purpose tools that Unity is developing internally, like Unity Reflect, Unity Forma, Mars, uh, Unity Simulation, or computer, um, um, computer vision. Art Engine, a Plastic SCM for um, version uh, management, and Furious for uh, cloud-based streaming uh, to any browsers. Right. We also have a program called Verified Solution Partners, which uh, are um, external solutions that we have partnered with in order to deliver them to the community. These include Pixies, Perspective, Interact, um, Stage VR, Stage on VR, sorry, and Vario. I'll be covering those in more details in the following slide. So. Uh, the Unity editor, you already probably know since you're here today, um, as you can see, it's a, a workhorse, right? Very flexible, open platform, uh, which millions of creators use every year um, to create the content. Actually, phone number, we in 2020, um, we had an average of 13,000 new projects created every day uh, on the Unity platform, right? So 13,000 new projects uh, daily being created by creators in order to develop experiences uh, across the board. Right? So it's a massive community that is generating a massive amount of content using the Unity editor, but it has its limitation. You can only import so many formats uh, like FBX or BJ, for example, or you know, using plugins, uh, you could also import like GLTF and for industrial use cases, this is quite limiting. This is why we partnered with a company uh, called Pixies that has um, two main tools. There's the Pixie Studio, which is a standalone application to do data preparation from CAD or BIM data. So CAD is usually what you would have like uh, parametric data that comes from, from tools like ATIA. Um, and BIM, uh, it's more um, architecture focused data that comes from tool like Revit, right? Let's say, but there's much more than that, but these are some of the main ones. Um, they also have Pixies plugin, which is a direct integration of um, their tooling inside the Unity editor. So it's super convenient. And that includes 140 algorithms to do data preparation uh, and data optimization, regardless of what you're doing, include a uh, generation of LODs and is, you know, um, has become an industry standard used by companies like Airbus, Google, and Alstom, for example, to do their data preparation, whether it's to Unity or other use cases, right? Uh, Pixie Studio, for example, is not uh, Unity specific. Pixies plugin obviously is a, integration inside the plugin editor is fully extensible with the C-Sharp API and also allows you to automate a lot of the rules because 
one of the key uh, unique selling point of Pixies is you can bring inside the unit you know, the metadata that comes with that engineering data, which is quite critical when you want to do automation or kind of like speed up your workflows or you know have a more intelligence when it comes to a part, for example, what is it made out of, what's the material, you know, or a simple what's the part number so you can display it to a user directly. We have also developed a solution called uh, Unity Forma, which is built on top of Unity Industrial Collection. Uh, Unity Forma is to speed up the creation of product configurators. Um, I have a whole series of webinars on them. If you want to check them out, I'll display the link at the end of the presentation. You can go now with your phone and snap uh, this to go to the page, or actually you can uh, use your phone and snap this link to go to the WebGL configurator, which was a collaboration between Unity and Light and Shadows uh, using Forma to do a WebGL mobile-friendly um, uh, product configurator, which will be uh, coming soon to Unity as a whole. We are optimizing our WebGL export not for WebAR yet, but at least WebGL is being worked on specifically as part of Forma, but also you know, something that will be available to the wider community. As highlighted by Innovation Rocks, uh, Unity is XR, right? This is really one of the key uh, drivers of Unity's adoption inside the enterprise. The uh, reason being, we support all of the major platforms when it comes to um, deploying XR content, that's ARKit for uh, um, iOS-based AR application, ARCore for Android-based application, HoloLens, Magic Leap, Oculus, Windows Mixed Reality for VR, um, obviously PlayStation VR, right, which is also quite a very popular uh, on the console side, one of the most popular consumer uh, VR platforms, and uh, OpenXR, which is sort of the uh, latest standard being developed by the Kronos Group. All of the uh, members on this uh, slide are part of OpenXR, it's also uh, Microsoft is really pushing it hard for the in integration um, or the content uh, creation when it comes to HoloLens. So it's going to be the de facto format and hopefully will also transpire to support for uh, WebVR and uh, WebXR and uh, WebAR. But that's you know further down the line. Uh, we don't have any official announcement on that. Um, although we do have public roadmaps uh, available. I can share maybe with uh, Harold later uh, the links. I don't think I have them in this presentation where you can submit this type of request or upvote them in order for uh, our product uh, managers um, to prioritize them based on uh, community demand. Right. Recently, actually uh, in March, we announced uh, uh, the Verified Solution Partner uh, Program uh, collaboration, I mean, the entry of VIO inside the Verified Solution Partner Program. So this is the first actually hardware manufacturer to come uh, into um, that program. And it's really um, critical for uh, the industrial space. VIO is very popular with our industrial customers due to the high uh, quality or high um, um, the pixel density of their headsets, uh, making it ideal for you know um, uh, training, also including uh, eye tracking, including inside out uh, tracking now with the XR3 and the inclusion of a LiDAR on the XR3 to do um, uh, object occlusion or include, uh, as you've seen with the Volvo video, uh, blend between the real and the virtual in order to create uh, novel um, XR experiences, right? We also have part of the very first solution um, partners interact, which is uh, developed by Light and Shadow. So this is a set of tools for uh, advanced uh, process, uh, immersive process uh, creation, right? Um, it includes a high uh, precision collision uh, detection with their engine uh, XDE, which is an external physics engine uh, integrated inside Interact, precise human grasping, haptic feedback, uh, cloud, um, uh, point cloud, sorry, physics. So you can do point cloud uh, physics detection, for example, to do a clash, collect, a clash detection when it comes to doing uh, layout, as you can see here in the video, for example, uh, and also ergonomic simulation. So these are a set of tools that overlay on top of uh, Unity Industrial Collection in order to do this type of advanced uh, scenario training. It's also a no-code solution. So there's a lot of visual tools to do uh, scenario uh, sequences, right? And also, assist um, 
uh, wizard to physicalize object and integrate with the various uh, headsets and hardware. And obviously, they also include their latest uh, plugin for Point Cloud. Uh, import comes with Interact. Uh, it's called Steeple, and uh, it supports uh, billions of clouds uh, in VR. Um, so really a great solution for this type of industry-specific uh, use cases. A more uh, standard um, VR training is uh, Baselab Weaver, uh, which has a few uh, parts as Weaver Creator, which allows you to create your uh, immersive uh, scenarios inside the Unity editor. Again, uh, using simple visual programming and scene management, procedure, uh, description, etc. There's a Weaver player that helps uh, deliver the experience. Uh, and um, is a one-stop shop basically for all XR training content and the Weaver manager that can in integrate with a learning management system or be used uh, off the shelf to deliver and manage uh, the training, ensuring that every employee that needs to um, has taken the training and has completed uh, with a satisfactory level. <laughs> And finally, on this uh, XR slides, we have uh, Unity Mars, which is a bespoke solution that's being developed uh, internally to ease the creation of AR experiences, avoid um, basically having to publish to the uh, device uh, in order to accelerate the creation of uh, XR or AR experiences. I should, because uh, Mars is focused solely on AR, but uh, you can test in the editor, you can do fuzzy uh, authoring, which is, you know, using uh, simple rules in order to dictate how content is going to react to the environment. Um, it's a, a multi-platform AR development framework. And there's also a companion mobile application that allows you to do reality capture or capture uh, environments, for example, from the video feed and share them with the developer so you don't necessarily have to be on site in order to do some AR uh, scenario testing, right? So really a comprehensive suite of tools. Uh, I have another presentation on uh, the latest features, which include you know, body tracking, for example, uh, and um, various simulation backends that you can integrate also with Mars. As I mentioned, I'm uh, focused on automotive transport in manufacturing, and manufacturing is one of the key areas of growth that we see with Unity. There's, there's a lot of uh, alignment between the tool and the needs of manufacturers. We are actually now officially members of an organization called the Manufacturing Technology Center here in the UK, where I'm based. Uh, it's in Coventry. And uh, member, other members include Airbus, Rolls Royce, DMG Mori, ABB, Siemens, BAE Systems. So, you know, it's a who's who of uh, industrials, basically. And this is an area, uh, 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 an organization where we look for ways of innovating, of collaborating, of creating innovative solutions, but also of empowering uh, new generations of young people uh, coming into uh, the manufacturing sector and help them adopt new uh, tooling like Unity and develop the skills required to bring this inside the, uh, the enterprise, right? Part of uh, our in, uh, manufacturing solution also is digital twin. This is really one of the hot topics uh, for industrial is simulating their products uh, or assembly uh, lines, simulating uh, their factories inside a virtual environment to do testing, to do pre-commissioning, to um, validate uh, you know, um, rates of uh, production, and but also, you know, really um, have a safe space to uh, break things without having, you know, massive repercussion in the real world, right? And Solution Lab Perspective, again, a verified solution partner is a SDK to accelerate the creation of a uh, digital twin, right? It includes, um, it leverages Pixies to import CAD data. You can define components, define behavior, connect to actually live data uh, with a slew of, uh, supported format, including ROS2. You can connect to PLCs, process, log um, process logic controllers, IoT uh, standards, and then test and validate your uh, setup, right? So this is, again, one of the solutions that we offer. And another great uh, solution for advanced industrial uses is AGX Dynamics. So this is actually an, an uh, engine that's agnostic, but there's an implementation inside Unity. And this is really for industrial grade uh, physics simulation, including, um, you know, hybrid solvers, right? Uh, really high mass ratio, one to one billion uh, simulation with modules. So they uh, provide out of the box quite a few modules for wire, elastic 
plastic beams, heavy vehicles, cable, even cable damage, uh, terrain, deformation, earth moving, uh, granules, as you can see here on the conveyor belt, and hydrodynamics and winds, for example, to um, uh, test, uh, as you can see in the video, for offshore marine simulation tests and see how cable will behave or a rover will behave. Like, for example, train operators not to tangle cables, right? Because it's better to do it inside the Unity editor than in real life when you're going to have to send divers in order to detangle a rover uh, in a um, uh, real life scenario, right? But also support for full simulation. You can see here this uh, robot is basically being trained with machine learning inside Unity using very precise uh, physics. And you have, for example, digital twin here where you can see the um, woodworking equipment, you know, picking up logs uh, in real life versus inside Unity. Out of the box, uh, Unity has support for robotics. We have a new uh, robotics hub, which is available on GitHub. So this is an open source project where you can learn and uh, how to integrate robotics inside your applications, but also how to connect to external uh, robot OS uh, instances. So there's an implementation of ROS uh, V1, V2 coming down the line uh, this year. We also updated the implementation of, I mean, the integration of physics from NVIDIA inside the engine, which is now uh, makes Unity out of the box, a solid robotic simulation uh, platform. This includes a new uh, articulated joint system and a new set of solvers, which can uh, solve much more complex simulation than before. Right. And you can see here in this little gift on the uh, right, where you have the Physics 4 uh, robot, which is much more stable than the Physics 3.4, where you have a lot of noise due to the um, sequence of joints uh, that are uh, introducing basically imbalance inside the simulation. Unity also has... Um, a few AI, machine learning, and simulation specific package. So there's a perception package with our computer vision uh, offering, which allows you to generate synthetic data um, inside the Unity editor. Why would you want to generate synthetic data? Well, you can introduce a lot of domain variation in the virtual world, which is almost impossible to acquire in the physical world. Right? So if you look at, for example, a street um, scenario where you're going to have an autonomous vehicle, even if you capture real life data, it's going to be, first of all, limited in scope when it comes to weather, when it comes to location, and also when it comes to population, how they behave and what's crossing the road and how. So there's also issues with privacy. So you need to anonymize all of that data. So it's costly. And then if you want to annotate it, for example, uh, that's usually a, a manual process with tens of thousands of people having to look at frames and annotate if there is a person there, if there's a stop sign, if there's a, a traffic light, and uh, you know if there's a zebra crossing, for example. Uh, so this is really costly and slow. It's much more efficient to generate that data directly inside Unity. You can really uh, not only uh, pre-annotate the data, but you know, annotate, have much more precise uh, object segmentation, right? Where you can have precise shapes, as you can see on the uh, second half of the frame there, where in red, uh, where you can clearly see, for example, you know, what's the sidewalk and what's the street. This will be almost impossible to do uh, with traditional labeling techniques uh, because they're not recognizing objects in 3D. They have to use you know 2D boxes. Based Basically on top of the picture. Uh, ML agent is a you know vastly popular framework to uh, output data and train algorithms with uh, scenarios inside Unity, or again, open source, just like the perception package. And finally, AI planner is a uh, tooling to do, for example, instructions or you know sequential uh, decision trees uh, for simulation, but can be used for training, can be used for a lot of uh, use cases. Again, uh, something that's available free and open source. Um, HDRP is also our, our uh, open source render pipeline available as a package, uh, but also on GitHub. Um, and uh, we released uh, recently a new HDRP since, uh, sample scene that's available in the hub uh, to teach people how to use um, the high definition render pipeline to create you know, photorealistic rendering. And there's also a collaboration with Volvo uh, that's again in the hub. Uh, we are starting in 2019.4. You have 
have access to uh, the auto showroom sample project, uh, which is free and open source and includes the XE40 uh, recharge to show you how to create a product configurator in HDRP using Unity. So these are both uh, great sample projects to get started with. If you want more resources on high-end graphics, again, that's you know one of the uh, key usage of Unity for industrial use cases. It's this type of, you know, uh, high fidelity rendering for products. Um, we have a great video on ray tracing with Unity that's uh, um, by my colleague Pierre Donzala and um, that was hosted by NVIDIA. Uh, Pierre also has a great video on achieving um, high fidelity graphics with HDRP. And there's also a great blog post on the auto showroom to understand what, how it was created and what's available in it. That includes, by the way, the UI to do the configuration, which is great. If you're interested in uh, games, there's a great new project by our uh, game uh, creator advocate team called Open Projects, which is an open source and uh, open um, community to create a video game using Unity. So everything is done in the open. Uh, people can collaborate. They're actually quite uh, far uh, into the project already, but it's a really great way to see how to create games and how to uh, create massively collaborative uh, design process in order to uh, create those games. So that's a quite an interesting project. And again, the whole thing is open source and all the assets are available for you to reuse or um, follow along as they develop the game. I wanted to mention uh, that as of um, version 2.5, the uh, Mixed Reality Toolkit that's very popular for HoloLens also supports now the Oculus Quest and the hand tracking, which is great uh, in order to create um, cross-platform experiences that have solid hand tracking. So, you know, HoloLens is one, but now you can also use that with uh, the Quest, which is great for uh, VR uh, training versus, you know, AR training. And finally, one of my favorite applications of all times when it comes to XR, which is Tearbrush, uh, is now available free and open Source, Google Open Source did. Obviously, it was created using Unity. Uh, and there's already a really fun project called MultiBrush, which allows you to do a multi user uh, tear brush uh, in VR. So that's quite brilliant. And I think that's it for me on this presentation. I guess, uh, Harold, I don't know if you want to do QA now or if you want to do it after. Uh, I'll uh, plug my webinars. So if you guys want to snap this and uh, see, there's a whole bunch of them already by myself and my colleagues on the industrial team uh, on various subjects. Yes, def definitely. Cool. Thanks a lot for the great talk and the fast forward on all the products and packages <laughs> Unity is offering. That was really impressive. Um, um, yeah, let's open up the mic for questions. And you, you asked me to share a feedback form. Shall we ask the participants if they already want to have a look at it in the meanwhile? Yeah, or since this is going to be on YouTube, you can put it in the description also if people want to um, um, cool. view yeah. it. It's fine. Yeah, it's up to you. Uh, I will share the link. And if anybody wants to ask a question now, please oh, unmute yourself. Come on, don't be shy. I'm sure someone has a question. If nobody starts, I will start. Uh, Jerome, um, how, how familiar are you with, with like uh, the third uh, plugins for Unity and for example, Pixies? As you said, this is a talk about automotive. Uh, I'm curious um, how you get from, from design and pet data to a full-sized model, like you have it in the, the Lexus or the Volvo project to get all the materials without human inter in intervention. Is this possible or, or are you getting there? Are there future plans to, to have such tools or, or could you also like use um, um, agents from Unity within to, to train like what material should go there or something? So there's uh, actually part of Unity Industrial Collection uh, includes support for material standards like AXF. 
so this is quite popular in the automotive sector. Uh, a lot of uh, manufacturers of paints, uh, like BASF, for example, will have uh, AXF. Uh, so AXF is the um, uh, appearance exchange format. Wow, that uh, <laughs> 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 I can't believe I remember that. Uh, so it's it's created by a company called Xrite, which does uh, basically uh, paint material scanners, right? So they mm -hmm. scan physical uh, paints and then digitize them to be included in digital uh, pipelines. So we have in HDRP, right? So this is really limited to HDRP because the materials are quite complex. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they include uh, subcoats, right? Clear coats, for example, for car paints, and then, you know, uh, little speckles for highlights uh, that reflect the light, make them shiny. Um, so all of this is supported inside uh, Unity HDRP, and you can import your AXF formats uh, directly inside the Unity editor. Uh, this is part of Unity Industrial Collection. So that's what I was mentioning at the beginning. You have the Unity editor, right? Um, which is the same for everyone. A Unity Industrial Collection includes Pixies plugin to bring the, the engineering data and the AXF or XTEX, uh, which is another format by another company, um, in order to uh, bring those materials. Now, the other materials, um, usually the assumption is uh, because they're very specific to the renderer, is you will have a um, material library specific to Unity, right? Let's say something either for you, the universal render pipeline or the uh, high definition render pipeline or the built in pipeline, right? If you're not using any of our scriptable render pipelines. Um, so you have this material library and with um, Pixies. Uh, so actually, I highlighted this in my uh, uh, in one of my uh, Unity Industrial Collection webinar. I think it was in uh, January. Um, you can uh, one of the rules that comes with uh, uh, Pixies plugin is material uh, swapping. So you can easily create a rule that says, you know, that uh, material which might come as a magenta when you know it, it's CAD, uh, because I know the meta in the metadata there's information that lets me know that this is, you know, the campaign, for example, right? Uh, then I can automatically assign the carpet material to that. And there's a rule, uh, a visual rule, um, part of the rule engine inside Pixies that allows you to do this uh, as an artist, for example. But right? they can set up those rules. You can run them every time you import the model automatically, and it will assign the, the materials. You can also uh, use a CSV um, import mechanism where you can, that can be defined externally when you export uh, the CAD data, for example, from a, a PLM system, right? a product management, product lifetime management uh, system. You can export the um, CAD data or the tessellated data if it's already tessellated, uh, and also F export you know the the this material table right that says what's referenced in the CAD equates to this material in Unity, and then automatic automatically Pixies can uh, swap those materials right. Um, the beauty of using something like Pixies with CAD data, so with parametric data, is you decide basically how to optimize um, the tessellation of your product based on the use case within Unity, right? So uh, if you pre-tessellate from, uh, let's say something like Atia and export an FBX, then once you get into Unity, it's painful to uh, retopologize uh, that mesh, for example, or to optimize it, to decimate it in order to reduce the complexity of it to make it performant in mobile. So if you have the parametric data, the CAD data, it's super easy with Pixies to say, you know, uh, my budget is 300,000 polygons, right? So just make that mesh uh, or that product, you know, 300,000 polygon, that's all I can afford. And Pixies will do its best to create that mesh. You can also tell it, you know, to um, uh, maintain some details or features of the product based on, you know, the, the specific use case or for, you know, a car, you know, you'd really want to, you know, keep some of the uh, outline, right? Some of those are you know, almost trademarked. So you want to keep mm -hmm. that visual uh, detailing, but you can also you can sort of uh, heavily decimate uh, the seats, or you can actually remove everything that's not visible, like the engine block and all that stuff if you don't need it. So yeah, um, honestly, having one hundred percent automation when it comes to data preparation assumes that you have really strict data creation uh, mechanism when it comes to the engineering data. Right. You can only automate something that's predictable. Uh, um, so we have customers, like I mentioned, um, uh, you know, as part of Pixies that have fully automated 
um, data preparation pipelines, but they have very stringent rules when it comes to creating that data, right, that engineering data. And if you don't follow those rules, basically the pipeline automation will fail. Uh, but for customers that do have those rules in place that are very strict when it comes to data creation or labeling, you know, with metadata, et cetera, then it is possible to fully automate uh, on the server and create asset bundles, right? Uh, automatically, we have customers that are doing that right now. Uh, some of them are creating thousands of asset bundles every hour, right? Because products are updated 60 times a day. <laughs> <laughs> and you know they're constantly generating that data in order for if someone you know pulls the data for a configurator, it's always the latest and greatest, right? Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. Um, the, the, while you while you're answering my question, uh, the, another question arises: like, um, is there a, a, a preferred format I would say for Pixies to to keep all the metadata? Um, because most of the industry is either only providing FBX or maybe if you're lucky STL, um, is there a better format to to like keep all the data that Pixis is able to? Uh, I would say uh, better, uh, but as as um, you might be able to see here, uh, Pixis support about thirty five formats, oh, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. That includes Katia, uh, JT. Yeah. Uh, step files, uh, all of those will have various level of metadata um, included with the, the product, right? Um, but yeah, so it's, uh, and if you have, for example, um, uh, you can use the rule engine also to, uh, you know, action those that metadata. One thing that I demonstrated, for example, um, is if you use Pixie Studio, which is the standard on tool, right? Uh, they have a, 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 a version that runs on the server called Pixie Studio Batch, right? Which is basically like uh, the, the the same as a desktop application, but as a service. And uh, what a lot of customers do is they do a data translation between engineering and the real time world, right? Mm -hmm. So when they know that that data is going to come to Unity, rather than uh, have uh, very cumbersome uh, processes inside Unity to to uh, understand the uh, engineering logic, right? They sort of translate that data, you know, saying like, hey, you know, this, uh, uh, this object, you know, is uh, add this metadata to this object because that's going to uh, be trigger a rule inside uh, the the Unity uh, editor that's going to optimize it to a, a, you know or add behaviors, right? So, um, for example, uh, I showcased this in one of my webinars where I took this uh, little. Um, forklift that you see on the screen there behind the Pixies interface um, and went from the CAD data to uh, a HoloLens ready model where I could grab, you know, uh, with my hands, the, the parts, you know, basically exploded, right, and select all the parts of the model. Uh, those behaviors were added using metadata that I, ha that I injected inside that model. Right. Uh, so I didn't use necessarily the engineering data, I used my own metadata so that I can predictably uh, trigger behaviors inside the Unity editor. So there's there's a few ways to do this. It depends really on the, on the setup. What we love about this solution is it's first, like I said, it's it's flexible. You have the Unity plugin if you're heavily reliant on Unity. But if you have other use cases when you want to have this uh, type of algorithms to um, uh, manipulate your en engineering data that might be coming from customers, uh, then you can use something like Studio, right, to do so uh, outside of Unity. So it's a, it's a very flexible solution where you can uh, really have a, a, a artist friendly workflow to manage uh, CAD data, which is not easy. Right? Cool. Thanks a lot. Um, anybody else wants to ask a question? I would have a question. Um, if somebody would want to play around with the cloud streaming solution offered by Unity, uh, how, how does it work? Do you need any cloud engineering experience? Do you need to have a company credit card to test the cloud services? Um, is there any so, free budget in the beginning to, to see if it fits your project? No, unfortunately, I don't think we offer free credits for, so it's called Furious, right? Um, our our uh, cloud streaming solution. Um, 
it's uh, super easy to uh, to get started. Basically, it's drag and drop, right? You create your Furious account, you put your uh, profile information, including your credit card, um, for for billing, right? Because it's a per per minute uh, billing, so uh, but it's pretty cheap. So you know, it's not going to cost you hundreds and hundreds of uh, uh, euros in order to get started. Maybe like you know, five ten euros will get you a long way, right? Uh, I think it's about depending on the plan, it's about four four uh, cents uh, per uh, minute, something like this. Uh, don't quote me on it. I haven't checked the pricing lately, but it's cheap enough that you know it's not going to break the bank if you test. You can put limits. Right, so when you generate uh, a, a share link, you can say, you know, don't go over five dollars, <laughs> and then as at five dollars, the link will be uh, not available anymore. So it's it's really made to protect uh, from overages, which is what happens a lot in the cloud space because they're consumption-based models. You select, you know, you create your AWS or GCP instance, and you host your your thing, and then you forget about it, and a month later you get a bill, you know, because you've been running that thing, you know, twenty four seven. Uh, Furious, you only pay for what you use, right? So first of all, you know, you don't pay for the hosting, even the, you know, uh, the application and asset hosting. If you bundle everything within your application, that's included in the uh, per minute streaming. So there's no uh, additional costs. Uh, at the, setting up an account is free unless you want to sign up for one of the tiers. So they have a tier system, um, which is where some of the upfront cost is because that's on a, a monthly basis. The, um, like I said, then after that, it's you create an application uh, inside the, the portal, uh, drag and drop your executable, which is going to be a Windows executable in this case, uh, that's uh, zipped, right? Uh, with all the uh, Unity, with all the assets. By the way, it doesn't have to be Unity, right? This is an agnostic solution. So if you double with Unreal or if you have, you know, another 3D um, uh, application that you want to push to Furious because you want to tap into, you know, the RTX uh, GPUs and, you know, the, uh, I think it's 24 or uh, 16 or 24 gigs of RAM that comes with uh, that the instances that they provide. Uh, you can upload those, right? This is not a, a Unity per se uh, or Unity only uh, streaming solution. You drag and drop your executable, and then you create a share link with you know the restrictions that you want to put in place, and you're good to go. Right? You can also create a uh, uh, an embed, the embed code to integrate it inside your website. Um, one key. Things to note is both for Unreal and for UDT, they have a uh, SDK that allows you to. Yep, uh, SDK that allows you to externalize the user experience, uh, the user uh, interface. Sorry, uh, so you don't have to necessarily embed that inside uh, your three D application. That can be on the host uh, HTML website, right? Uh, so that's a very powerful feature, which allows you to really integrate the the cloud streaming inside, you know, your uh, web flow. Um, but yeah, I invite people to you know uh, check it out. Um, in the slides that I shared, there was the former uh, link, and uh, that has a Furious instance uh, embed for the, the product configurator. So if you want to check it out, you know that doesn't cost you anything, and you can see sort of the kind of uh, uh, responsiveness and visual quality that you can get from Furious. Right? Mm -hmm. cool. And they support real time tracing, so RTX is uh, <laughs> supported on Furious, which is great for really. Uh, high fidelity content. Cool, thank you. Anybody else wants to know a little bit more about one of the topics Jerome presented? Feel free. Go. Feel free to bug him as long as he is available to us. I have maybe one one final question. Um, I know you. I know your web blog, um, but or webinars, um, but. Uh, I know there are a lot of, of Twitter accounts from Unity. Is there also like a Twitter account for automotive? Because I haven't found any. No, uh, for sure, we don't have actually, which is, uh, uh, we don't have industrial specific uh, okay. Twitter accounts. We, some of the content comes through. Uh, the best is to follow us on LinkedIn. Uh, so uh, there's a few uh, of my colleagues. There's a page on the Unity website with all of the industrial uh, technical specialists, but uh, if you're interested in um, 
architecture, engineering, construction, or media and entertainment, for example, you know, ping me on LinkedIn and I'll, I'll um, send you the profile to, to my colleagues. It's Ben Radcliffe who does media and entertainment. We have uh, Antonia Forster who's doing the XR specific uh, uh, subject as a technical specialist, but also um, John Futcher who's uh, based in the US and, and works a lot with the uh, AEC. So there's a few of us on the uh, industrial team that are available. Okay, cool. Last chance for a question. Um, yeah, otherwise, thank you very much for the great presentation and sharing your insights with us, Jerome. Um, yeah, let's have a break until, um, yeah, 10 minutes until 7.45, is that okay? And after the break, we will do the um, link office style discussion. Yeah, this is the, uh, on the former webpage, you can see this configurator that's running on Furious right now, right? So it's available on our website if you want to show uh, people, you know, how that works. Cool. That's, that's an uh, HDRP scene. Uh, it includes, you know, some of the. Uh... Wow. How, how quick does the scale, Jerome, in, in regards of like, um, if you want to make this on a, on a show or, or, or a fair or something like that, um, how many customers can it um, like, so how, how, re, uh, how, how fast is this scaling up? Right, with a lot of so it really depends uh, they can they support multiple thousands concurrent users uh, these are far and few that would be like big international brands that would have this type of traffic yeah. uh, if you have a specific event um, they now provide the ability to sort of uh, to pre-allocate uh, for that event, you know and ensure that you have the infrastructure required right also uh, keep in mind that you um, you set uh, one of the Furious is fully on demand. Mm -hmm. So you set basically the maximum number of concurrent users you want, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and they use a system called the buffer, uh, which basically says, I always want five instances in my buffer. So five people connecting at the same exact time would have an instant on experience. The other one that have, they may have to wait, you know, a minute to, uh, to spin up an instance, but at least you only pay for that buffer. Right, not for the hundred instances that you're going to be using if hundred people connect. Right, so that's one of the key is is they're really pushing this on demand um, uh, uh, service because you know again, right, if you need to pre-allocate a uh, hundred instances of uh, cloud infrastructure and then only ten people show up during that week, you know, you just paid for a lot of things that people didn't use so um yeah again uh, i hope the the playback is uh, is smooth because it's obviously smooth on my end uh this is i know this looks like a video but this is all in real time in format right this is running right now i can uh, actually um i can change the car color but right, as i go uh so i ask you now to switch something in the interior so that we really see that's not a pre recorded video yeah i can uh, you know i can like i just changed the uh, you can see I ch i'm changing the colors of the car i mean right now i'm inside so i can go back to uh, one of the cameras right i can go back to the uh, the back and here i'm rotating right i think that's proof enough thank you sharon <laughs> <laughs> so we we can open the uh, the louvre there or turn off the lights for example uh cool Cool, yeah, awesome. we can have an uh, exploratory testing session in the break then. <laughs> <laughs> the, the first one who finds a bug gets a free beer from Jerome. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was just a joke. Okay, let's have the break. All right. Thank you, Sharon, again, and see you after the break. Yeah.